Hi guys, welcome back to the Spurred On podcast. This is the match preview for the Luton versus Tottenham Hotspur game on Saturday, tomorrow, 12.30pm on BT Sport, what is now TNT Sports, I suppose. Um, First of all, though, before we get into it, please do uh, drop a little like, uh, a follow, or a subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And any comments, any questions, do put them below and I will answer them and I will add them to a future kind of question and answer format that I'm planning to do. I've been really uh, excited by the reaction to these shows so far, so please do keep watching and listening and send in any questions you have. But tomorrow, Luton away. Lots of people have been talking on uh, other podcasts I've been listening to and other shows about how this is the definition of a game that usually... Tottenham, having been on a good run, where they're expected to win against a smaller team, may not get the three points. Worryingly, I'm feeling a bit more confident about it. I want to just go through Luton's results, first of all. They've lost at home to West Ham on the first day. They lost away at Fulham after that 1-0. Then one all draw at home to Wolves in an exciting game. They lost in the Carabao Cup to Exeter away, lower league club. And then... Last Saturday, they got their big statement first win of the season. 2-1 at Goodison Park, away at Everton. Now, I think I've said it earlier on this week, and I do think it's important that they got their win before they play Spurs. That was a big win for them. Everton, obviously, in all sorts of trouble at the moment. But a big win for them. And then this is another important thing. In the week, on Wednesday night, they played Burnley at home. Vincent Company's Burnley, who obviously we went and destroyed at their place earlier in the season. And they lost to Burnley 2-1 at home Burnley's first win of the season and the reason that's important is not necessarily because they lost although I do think you know morale etc you if they'd come in on two wins on the spin you never know that might have made more of a difference but also because midweek fatigue I know it's Wednesday to Saturday they've had three days but small squad they've just come up from the championship every game in the Premier League is an absolute battle whereas we've had the whole week to get our players kind of fit and trained and that I think will add you know, it'll make a 5-10% difference. So I wanted to mention that up top. In terms of the Tottenham team news, nothing unexpected really. Obviously earlier in the week we had the news that Mana Solomon is out for two to three months now having done his meniscus. That's very sad. I know a lot of fans haven't necessarily been blown away by Solomon's start at Spurs, but I do think he's an important player to bring pace from the bench and that takes away that option, which is a shame. Um... I don't know, I like him. I think certainly on a free transfer, it's it's made sense as business and I think he could improve. He's still young as well and we have seen him score goals um, in the Premier League for Fulham but he's also already made a couple of assists for Spurs so it's a shame to see him out. Other than that, I think it's what, ex- what we expected. Brennan Johnson isn't quite ready yet so he'll have the international break to kind of deal with that what looked like a kind of tight hamstring in the, in the game a couple of weeks ago at Arsenal. And obviously Perisic is still out. Basically, Postacoglu said in his press conference today that all the players who we knew are out are not back yet. And all the players who played last week are fine. The only difference is uh, that Giolo Celso and Brian Hill have both been training this week, apparently. So I wonder whether they will make the bench tomorrow. It wouldn't surprise me if they do. Um, so that could be interesting because obviously... Son hasn't been able to play the full 90 minutes recently and uh, Madison obviously got a, a bad tackle on his on his leg a couple of weeks ago, his knee uh, in the Arsenal game. So be interesting to see whether Lo Celso is an option to bring off the bench for uh, Madison and uh, maybe Brian Hill gets a chance on the big Ange for Son. I definitely think Brian Hill has the talent to make it in the Premier League um, and definitely know that Ange will give him the confidence, certainly in a different way to what Conte did. But has he got the physical presence to make it happen? And also, realistically, he needs to start making inroads soon. He's already had two loan loan deals away from the club. I don't know. Jury's still out. I do like him as a player. I especially like him potentially in that 10 role or coming off uh, one, of the, one of the flanks. I think if anyone can make it happen for Brian Hill, it's big and. So let's see what happens. Okay, so that's the team news. I want to go into now what I think is important. I think we should basically stick with the same team as we started with last week against Liverpool and with Richarlison on the left. I was very impressed with his performance on the left-hand side. Far more impressed than I have been when he's played number nine this season. Uh, He played a couple of beautiful crosses with the outside of his right foot, which is great because everyone is going to expect, all defenders are going to expect that he wants to come inside on his right and maybe play a cross over towards the the far post but instead he took it round on the outside and bent one in with the outside of his right foot one of which of course was for Sonny's goal so I think 
keep him out on the left. It takes the pressure off him to score goals. And conversely, I think with the pressure off less, he may well even score tomorrow. So that's what I'm hoping will happen. The important thing for me, one of the important things is I've watched quite a bit of, of Luton's uh, highlights from this season. I haven't watched any 90-minute games, but I've been impressed by the way that actually they've attacked a lot more than I kind of would have expected them to. I think a lot of people are expecting them to just go low block tomorrow, just see if Spurs can open them up, and maybe they will. But I think with the atmosphere there tomorrow, we'll be the first big six club to, uh, obviously we didn't come sixth last in the top six last year, but you know, traditionally big club to go to Kenilworth Road this season. The atmosphere will be big, even though it's an early kickoff, and maybe that will persuade some of their players to do what they've done a, a little bit this season, that's be kind of overly brave on the ball. And maybe they'll attack us a bit more in the first 15 minutes than we expect. And if that happens and we can win possession and pick them off, get that first goal, then it could be a relatively easy afternoon for us. But the longer they stay in the game, and if they stay at nil-nil or if they were to nick a goal, it could definitely get difficult. So I'm just wondering, can we possibly draw them onto us a little bit? Give them a bit of confidence or allow them to have a bit of confidence and then pick them off on the break. I'm going to tell you my Spurs team now before going into more depth about what I think Luton can offer playing against us tomorrow. I'd go with the same. So Vicario and goal, Pedro Porro, uh, Destiny Adoggi at left back, Van der Vaart, uh, Van der Vaart, Van der Ven, sorry, I wish it was Van der Vaart. Love Rafa Van der Vaart. Uh, Van der Ven and Romero, centre-back, Bissouma, Pat Matassar and James Madison in midfield. And then Richarlison, as I said, on the left, Sonny in the middle and Decky on the right. And then maybe, like I said, a couple more options off the bench in Lo Celso and Brian Hill. So in terms of opposition report, having watched a little bit of, uh, of Luton, their player Morris, I think it's Carlton Morris, very dangerous from set pieces and corners. They've scored a number of goals from set pieces this season. That's how they uh, got their goals against Everton at Goodison Park. And let's face it, Everton under Sean Dyche are by no means a kind of cultural passing team themselves. So they obviously put in the battle, 11 against 11, a big physical battle tomorrow. The other thing I'd say is Spurs are not the tallest team, other than maybe Van de Ven. We're pretty small at set pieces so we've got to be really careful and really on it and really strong because Luton will try and win free kicks up in uh, our final third. They'll try and win as many corners as they can. They may even sneak in the odd uh, long throw, knowing that they're a lot taller than us and knowing that it will put us under pressure. Also, they've been very dangerous from kind of crosses from deep as well as their players getting to the byline. And again, getting it onto Morris's head. He's a big danger up front. So... If he's playing for them tomorrow, that is where I think the real danger will be. Also, they've got a couple of big centre-halves. I know they've got a centre-half. One of their uh, go-to centre-halves is injured. I can't remember his name at the moment. But they will definitely be dangerous in the air. However, conversely, weirdly, despite them being a lot bigger than us, from what I've seen, they're also very vulnerable to crosses themselves. So I'm thinking... Obviously, we're going to play Ange ball. We're going to try and move them about. We're going to play, try and play the intricate stuff in central midfield. Make spaces. Madison play balls through the lines to our wingers. And uh, Richarlison get in kind of low crosses to Sonny, just like we've scored goals in the last couple of games. But if it gets difficult and it goes into the second half, 60th minute or so, and we haven't scored, it might be worth moving Richarlison inside to number nine and moving Sonny out wide if he can carry on, if his injury isn't bad. Because they are vulnerable to crosses to two. They've conceded a number of cross goals from a number of crosses this season. And I think that could be a possibility. It's a shame Perisic isn't fit, actually, because he would be the perfect person to be putting crosses onto Richarlison's head. As I kind of alluded to earlier on, they're very brave Luton in their own half. And if they continue to be brave like that against Spurs tomorrow, I do think our high press will pick them off and will win the ball in their final third very often and make chances for Sonny, for Richarlison, for Decky to run at them, kind of overload them and hopefully score some goals, even potentially with Madders come, making late runs into the box. And as we saw with Pat Matassar in the Man United game, late runs into the box, if we've won the ball up the pitch, that could be a possible way we're going to score. Finally, I think uh, I alluded to it earlier, but it's important to stress again, small squad, They'll be fatigued from the amount of games they've had to play. They had to play on Wednesday against Burnley. They didn't get that one over the line. Vincent Company's team played really well. Luton had just equalised and Vincent Company's team scored straight afterwards. So it shows they're kind of vulnerable at times. Maybe their confidence isn't quite there. So as a result, I'm going to go for my prediction tomorrow of Luton 1, Tottenham Hotspur 3. And in terms of goal scorers, like I said, I've got a feeling Rishi might get one. I think Sonny might get one. Don't be surprised maybe if Pat Matassar steps up from a late run into midfield 
And if not Pat Matasar, I would go for James Madison from a free kick, something like that. 3-1 Spurs. Can we get that result, make it relatively comfortable, go into Sunday's Arsenal-Man City game, top of the league, and then if it's a draw or Arsenal don't get a win that's bigger than our win, we go into the international break, top of the league. That would be a lovely way to do it. Guys, thank you for listening and watching. If you're on YouTube, do drop a subscribe and drop a comment. It's at Barnaby Slater underscore on YouTube. And if you're on audio, wherever you're listening, thank you so much. If you're not, do check check us out, the Spurred On podcast on all the usual podcast platforms. Come on, you Spurs.